Hello and welcome to this episode of Packet Tracer. In this episode, we want to talk about simulation mode and in simulation mode, we want to talk about managing simulation scenarios. In Packet Tracer, you can set up and simulate complex networking situations through the user created packet window found in here. A scenario is a set of PDUs that you have placed in the network to be sent at specific times. When you first switch to simulation mode, the default scenario is scenario zero. You can edit the name of the scenario or you can write a description for the scenario by clicking here. Let's write the description. This is my scenario with pings. And you can also edit the name of the scenario. My scenario. You can create new scenarios or delete scenarios. So this is a new scenario. This was the default scenario, which I renamed. This is a new scenario. Or I can now delete my old scenario. Here I am in this scenario with my description and I want to delete it. So now I can delete it. Now the default one for me is scenario one. So basically the purpose of creating multiple scenarios is that you can create one topology, but you can test different conditions for this one model that you have created. Please note that there is a difference between the packets that are shown in here, which is the user created packet window and the packets that are showing in here, which is the event list. The event list is basically all packets occurring anywhere on the network that you have chosen to display. And they were not necessarily originated by you or by protocols that are running on the network device. But of course, the user created packet window is exactly the packets that you have created for your own. The PDU list is an important part of the user created packet window that tracks all of the PDUs that you have created for your scenarios. Let's just create a PDU first so you can see that how the PDUs are created and how you can see them here in the PDU list. If you want a better view for the PDU list, then you can toggle the PDU list window and the PDU list will appear in here for you for a better view and more details are shown now. The fire field is to send the PDU immediately in real time mode or queue for transmission in simulation mode. The last status indicates the last known status of the PDU. It could be successful, it could be a failure, or it could be in progress. The source shows the name of the device which the PDU was originated. The destination shows the name of the device that the PDU is ultimately trying to go. The type specifies the PDU protocol type. It could be ICMP, CDP, DTP, FTP, SNMP, and many protocols as such. The color field shows the PDU color as it appears in the animation, and we can change it, of course. The time field displays the simulation time or time frame at which the PDU is scheduled to be sent. The period field indicates whether this PDU is going to be sent periodically, yes or no. The num field shows a numerical index for the PDU. You can double click on the edit field to edit this PDU in this complex PDU window, where you can change many properties of this PDU from source address to destination address to sequence number and size and of course the periodic interval that this PDU is supposed to be sent. Maybe we can change the periodic interval to five seconds. Now as you can see the detail has changed. Or you can double click on this delete field to delete this user created PDU. 
You can also arrange the placement of each of the fields in the PDU list by dragging the title of the field to the desired position. Please note that if you reset the simulation, the PDUs will not disappear from here. It will only disappear from the event list and the time will be reset it to zero. If you want to delete a PDU from PDU list window, then you definitely need to double click here. You cannot delete it by resetting the simulation. That's it for this episode, everyone. I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to see you in the next episode. Stay tuned.